All right, greetings everyone once again. Welcome to the bush. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. It's going to be kind of something unique. It's really never been done on this channel before, but I think most people will like it. Uh, those of you that may follow me on social media, whether it's on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, um, you all know I'm a big reader. I love reading books. I read all manner of books, whether it's Stephen King to something survival specific. I get a lot of questions and a lot of comments from folks about different books that I've read, uh, which ones are good, which ones are bad, what should they invest their time and their money and their efforts into. What I wanted to do was really start creating a, an opportunity and a, and a resource for people to leverage when it comes to some of the books that I have uh, experienced and read over my years. Some of these books have influenced me in a variety of ways. Most of the books that I'm gonna be addressing here will be uh, somewhat related to the outdoors, whether it is survival, primitive skills, bushcraft, flint napping, uh, rock climbing, navigation, you name it. If it's out there and I've read it and I can provide some input on it, I will definitely do that. So today's first book will be the book by Robert Turner called Flint Napping. Now, this is a very unique book. This is a book that I've picked up um, many years after I started Flint Napping. Um, just, you know, because I'm always looking for new resources and new opportunities. And the one thing I wish is that I picked this up when I first started flint napping. Because this is a great book that really goes into some uh, very unique examples and great explanations into core concepts of flint napping. And that's one of the questions I get a lot from folks is, hey, what books do you recommend when it comes to flint napping? When I started flint napping, there was no YouTube. There was nothing like that that you could resource. So you had to read books. You had to find those experts. You had to experiment with things. This is definitely a good book for the beginner who's wanting to learn terminology, proper methodologies when you're actually going through the flint napping process. Inside, it has some great, great descriptions and great examples from everything from uh, platforms to understanding what a biface is. That this sort of book is going to help the beginning napper or maybe somebody who's still kind of a couple years in trying to learn some more concepts learn some core skills and really kind of get a good understanding of what flint napping is i've never met robert turner so i can't speak on his behalf i have done some light research on him and i know he's been flint napping for many of years and he is considered an expert within this field as someone who is reviewing this material to also be considered uh, very proficient or somewhat an expert in this field. That's where that critical analysis really comes in. And what I can tell you is the breakdown and the components of this book and how the terminology is used, more importantly, how it's explained to the learner, to the user, to you all, um, is very easy to understand. I've seen other uh, books that cover flint napping and they get very technical and it can lose the reader, especially if you're brand new. This book doesn't do that. This book will ultimately explain it very easily and then allow you to apply it in a real flint napping situation. It's very important that if a book sets out to do something, does it actually do that? This book does. It serves to be that initial guide for that flint napper and really help progress you from taking a raw piece of stone and turning it into some sort of biface and then refining it down and working it into some sort of uh, stone tool. Now it's important to understand that this book is more of an academic book. It is like a, a guide book. It, there is no flowery words. It is clear and concise. This is what you need to do. This is how you go about doing it. If you run into these problems along the way, this is what you can do to overcome it. One really great point about this book that I thought was very important, and this is something I get a lot of questions uh, from folks all around, is what are the right rocks to use? And that's really what um, that first chapter is really about, understanding what rocks you're going to wind up using, understanding and identifying what those rocks are. That first chapter just kind of manages ex expectations right up front, and that is hugely important. That is extremely important, and that's really a great value to this book. Comparing this book as far as its authenticity and its accuracy, I find the book to be very accurate. There are a few techniques in here that uh, from a beginning standpoint, I might address differently if I was teaching a class or if I was writing a flint napping book, but they still get to the, the same end state. Okay, so there's a few things that I would personally um, do a little bit different, but there's nothing that's inaccurate in this book. After all of my years of flint napping, I can tell you, um, you know, I wish I would have had this book early, early on. One uh, very unique thing in the back, which is kind of, you know, in all books, is the glossary of terms. And I really like the glossary of terms because it gives simple explanations. So for example, a braider, a rough stone for a braiding, usually part of the grind wheel or mill stone grit, right? So it kind of just lets you know very, very simply. It doesn't use more technical terms and the glossary of terms to explain what a specific um, word is. Very clear and concise as far as the glossary of terms. Illustrations in this book are really great. 
a lot of great illustrations. There's some uh, great colored pictures in there as well. My favorite portion of this entire book is chapter six when it goes over the history of napping. I really like when I come across a book, especially when it has to do with survival or bushcraft or primitive skills, and it gives me a little bit of history. A small chapter, but it's pretty interesting to read and it kind of helps the, the, the learner, the user kind of uh, better understand why they are pursuing this, why they are looking into this very unique art form um, and kind of manage their own expectations, kind of help them along in their own journey. A few parting shots before I go. I definitely recommend this book um, in the sense that it's going to be great for the beginner flint napper or someone who's a couple years in still trying to understand terminology. Maybe the YouTube videos aren't really helping you. Uh, maybe some of the other books that exist are a little bit more technical. This book really breaks down into its simplest form. Very easy to read. Not a lot of flowery words. There are some technical words, but the glossary of the terms in the back helps break down those words so the user, you, can ultimately understand what they are. All right. That pretty much sums it up, folks. Again, this is the uh, Flint Napping Book, A Guide to Making Your Own Stone Age Toolkit by Robert Turner. This is a great book. Um, it is a book I definitely recommend. This will not um, hinder you. It will not confuse you. It's clear. It's concise. It's simple to understand. It's very simple to digest. And you can see how thick it is. It is right around 160 pages of the most important information for you, the beginning flint napper, to really understand the, the terminologies, the methodologies, and ultimately start creating your own Stone Age toolkit. Flint napping, can't go wrong with it. Everyone, before I get ready to take off, know this, I will provide a uh, link to this particular book, uh, Flint Napping by Robert Turner. I will leave a link down in the description. And uh, if you have any book recommendations or if there's a book you'd like me to review or get my hands on and actually uh, put to the test, that's actually using some of the ideas and concepts in the book or just reading it to review it for just the, the common knowledge, uh, send me a message, hit me up, leave it in the comments below and I'll see what I can come up with. So, all right, see you in the bush.